Good morning, good morning, good morning. Very stupid o'clock, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Spilling Tea. I am your host, Tiffany Daniels, and today is Sunday. Now, folks, we are going to be speaking about the horrible world known as the JRC, but before we get going, a few of the usual disclaimers. All right, first off, you are going to see the link to this investigation report done by the DPPC, Disabled Persons Protection Commission, right there in the description box alongside the other pertinent links to the Stop the Shocks campaign, including Autistic Hoya's massive archive on the subject, also the templates, more important now, guys, than ever they were before. We need pressure on everyone, everyone, <clears throat> to stop the torture that is going on in this so-called school, all right? All you gotta do, click the link, sign your name, click on your senator, and share like crazy, all right? We also have the everpresent change.org, shut the Judge Rotenberg Center down petition. All right, folks, when we talk about the JRC, <clears throat> especially for the new series, we're starting on it this morning. You are going to catch vivid descriptions of and clips of surveillance footage of people with disabilities being tortured and abused. If you have young children present, please use your headphones. Also, folks, it is 4.21 a.m. stupid o'clock in the morning. I am barely awake, my allergies are bothering me, and I woke up pissed off at air, okay? So if <clears throat> I stumble over any of my words this morning, hack and cough and clear throat and ad nauseum, or just stare off into space and spray curse words all over this video this morning, my apologies. In advance, all right? Now, this current new series we are starting this morning is going to have several parts to it. We are going over the sustained and proved cases in regards to complaints of abuse. All right? So, we're going to go ahead and get started with the first one. Remember, if you want to follow along, Links in the description box, or you can go to Autistic Hoya's Massive Archive. Uh, <clears throat> okay. So we got a lot of blacked out because, of course, the disclaimer is up here. So the alleged name is blocked out. And this is DPPC case number 141 at 700. <clears throat> and the date of this incident is relatively recent, folks. This comes from January the 9th, 2016. Allegation investigated on January the 9th, 2015. Shortly before midnight, originally reported as January the 8th, 16, Blank heard ALV yelling. <coughs> uh, <coughs> I did say I had allergies problems, folks. Bear with me. I do not have an edit button. Ugh. Sorry. As ALV walked in, they saw ALV aggressive and non-compliant with staff members. Oh, you mean that they didn't want to get adverse how horrible of them. ALV attempted to bite a staff member. I would have done a lot worse. Blink and staff attempted to restrain ALV. During the incident, Blink saw ALAB1 appear to strike LIV in the face while attempting to restrain her. Blank is uncertain if the incident witnessed was an accident or intentional. Oh, bullshit. Bullshit. Seriously? How can... 
Can anyone tell me how I punched to the face is accidental? What is this? A punch is always intentional, you idiots. Really? How can you accidentally punch someone in the face? You can accidentally hit someone, sure. But to punch someone requires you to make a fist. Okay. ALV was crying and frustrated. ALV was angry and non-compliant both before and after the incident. Oh, gee, yeah, thank God forbid, you know, we don't just absolutely let them do whatever they want to us. ALAB1 didn't have to be behind the other staff members. ALAB1 could have positioned herself better. January the 27th, 2016. As a result of the civil investigation by DPPC, Sergeant Grant rescreened this case originally and forwarded to the Norfolk DA's office for review and assignment to law enforcement. The alleged victim, ALV, is a disabled person as defined by MGI Chapter 19C and or 118 CMR. If not, please explain. Bleh. 118, yeah, we're not. 118 CMR definition. A person between the ages of 18 and 59 inclusive who is either in, really? Okay, so it's 2016. The fucking DSM-5 has been out for damn near a decade at this point. Literally the rest of the damn planet is using the term intellectually disabled. And you backwards fuckers who like to sit there and tout how progressive you are continues to use the words mentally retarded? Really? 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 And that's the very least of their problems, which is even more messed up. As used in MGL 123B and 1, or who otherwise mentally or physically disabled, a mental or physical disability prevents or restricts the individual's ability to be able to provide for one's own daily living needs. Provided, however, that a person is temporarily dependent upon a medically prescribed device procedure to solely treat a transitory physical ailment or injury, should not be considered a disabled person for purposes of MGL-19C unless that person otherwise meets the definition of a disabled person. The term person with a disability may be used in place of the term of disabled person without changing the meaning of either. Okay, in other words, Massachusetts is utterly backwards when it comes to disability. Really. Really. Because there are a lot of disabled. Hi, how you doing? who are able to go out and provide for themselves and tend to their daily needs, as long as we have the reasonable accommodations and aids that we need in order to be able to do so. This is backwards, it's ableist as fuck, and no wonder, no wonder, Massachusetts is so far behind everybody else. My God, there was a time, there was a time I wanted to live in Massachusetts. Not anymore. Not anymore. Okay, moving forward. The alleged primary victim's primary disability. Okay. The alleged abuser, LAB, does... MGI Chapter 19C or 118 CMR meet the definition of caretaker as defined by MGI 19C and or 118 CMR. If ALB does meet the definition, provided at least one example of care provided. If LAB does not meet the definition, list facts that support this determination. ALAB is at AVIL V's group, and she provided as needed assistance to ALC with activities of daily living. 
<coughs> yeah, you need torture to live better. You didn't know that? These people are on crack. CMR definition. Any state agency and or in any individual responsible for the health and welfare of a person with a disability by providing for or directly providing assistance ne meeting daily living needing, regardless of the location within such assistance occurs. Minor children and adults adjusted educated incompetent by the court of law shall be deemed to the be caretakers. Oh, for the love of God. Yes, the law fucking court is to determine whether I'm disabled or not. You know, if there are multiple medical degrees. God, you're backwards. DPPC, Protection Commission, MGI 19C, CMR Investigation Report. I don't know if I can trust someone to protect me whose definition of disability is for uh, so far freaking outdated, it's sad. Just, just saying. Category of abuse committed by alleged abuser. Act. Injuries sustained by alleged victim. Physical injuries. None. Second, none. Really? Emotional injuries, none, second, none. So, so they just got punched in the face by their caretaker, and you're going to tell me that it did not mess with their emotions. Really, Karen? Really? Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot. Our federal government, and certainly the Massachusetts government, don't think we're real people. We don't have emotions or anything like, you know, real human beings. God, these people make me sick. Abuse, per se. Application of physical force in a manner that inflicts pain. Other or more two types of injury. Explain. Description of the act or omission of alleged abuser that caused injury sustained by alleged victim. Blank. Video footage from a restraint of LAV on January the 19th, 2016. Not on January the 8th, 2016, as originally reported, shows ALAB1 standing behind the two staff restraining ALV on the floor of ALV's bathroom. Jesus. ALAB1 is not physically part of the restraint. Initially, both her hands are visible. Her right hand can clearly be seen moving back and towards the area where ALV is on the floor. A skin-to-skin skin noise is clearly heard after this, and ALB has a audible verbal response. ALB that said that ALB hit her on the face and arm and that it hurt. But there's no injuries. Although ALAB said that she was attempting to redirect ALB from hitting her own face, oh, bullshit. Bullshit. Major bullshit. I-5 said ALB was secure in the restraint, and at the point he saw ALB's one's hand move toward ALV. Based on available evidence and testimony, it is more likely that not that ALAB one's action was the use of physical force to cause pain. ALV had no physical injury, but she confirmed that she felt pain. Facts pertinent to the allegation investigated. According to I-5, who was scheduled to work in the house that evening, he responded to LAV's room after hearing from the neighboring unit that there was commotion. ALV was reported to be non-compliant, refusing redirection back to bed. Oh, God, you know, God fucking forbid they have to get up and pee or need a snack. You know, like the fucking rest of us. It might be insomnia. After all, they live there with you. ALV was reported to be aggressive, attempting to hit staff and herself. 
I would be aggressive with the staff. I-5 stated that he and I six put ALV into a two person seated hold on the floor of her room as ALB1 was standing behind them. I-5 stated that he and I-6 had ALV securely in restraint. He saw ALB's hand go past his head and make contact with ALV's face. I-5 was not sure whether this was intentional or not, but did seem out of place to him. When asked if ALV cried out when this happened, I-5 stated she had been crying throughout the instant, so he did not notice. Gee, I wonder why. What would they possibly have to cry about in your fucked up school? Like, what if she was crying from an ulcer, you know, like, you know, Linda Cornelson, who you let die? When asked what ALAB could possibly be doing, he said that maybe she was trying to do a head hold because ALV was attempting to bite. Okay, was she properly restrained or not? So on one hand, you're going to sit there and tell me she was perfectly under control, but then to excuse your fucking fellow staff members' actions, you're going to sit there and try to make excuses for it. Maybe they were trying to put her in a hold. Uh, Riddle me this, Batman. Riddle me this. When has putting someone in a hold ever required you to make a fist? Because, like I said many times, I have been around hospitals and nursing homes my entire life. I have never seen my mom ever, ever have to make a fist in order to restrain someone who was out of control, okay? Never saw that. Really? Because if they do, if what you're stating is true and they were just trying to make a hold, that just goes and proves my point further about how untrained these people are and how much they have no damn business working in a job like that after three weeks training. So which one is it, JRC? Are they completely inadequately trained? Or are they committing violence for the sake of it? It, it Like, seriously. I-5 said that it would, did not seem right to him, and he confirmed that ALV was securely held when this occurred. I-6 stated that he had not seen this incident. The video footage of the incident was reviewed. Although the room is dark and ALV's body is blocked by ALAB1, it is clear that ALAB1 is not a part of the restraint. ALAB1 can be seen lifting up both sleeves and then moving her hand into the area where ALV would be. A noise that sounds like skin hitting skin is heard and ALV does seem to cry out louder. I-5 clearly stated that he saw ALV1 make contact with Al's face, although he could not describe the nature of this contact. When asked if anyone hurt her during a recent restraint at her house, ALV said that Blank had. I1 stated that this was likely by the same students used for ALB1, and ALAB1 confirmed this. ALV said that he was hit by LA, ALAB1's hand on each side of her face, check area, and on her arm. ALV denied injury from this but she did say that it hurt. I3 and I4 both reviewed the video footage. They said that they were concerned by it. The mention concerned that there appears to be a verbal response to the clear movement of ALAB1's hand toward the area where ALV is, and concerned with staff positioning in part of ALAB1's blocking of the camera and standing behind the restraint. There is clear verbal response from ALV to ALAB1's action. There are other times that ALV cries out as well. At one point, she says to I6, why you step on my feet, as she cried out just before this as well. I6 described this same interaction, including what ALV said, but noted that ALV had in fact been stepping on his feet when she said to him about his stepping on her feet. 
Isaac said that ALV was pressing her nose and saying no, no, when he was doing nothing. Really? She can't just say no, no, because, you know, you spend your days torturing her constantly, and your very presence is traumatizing to her. Your very presence indicates that she's about to be punished for existing, and you wonder why she's going no, no. After watching the video, I6 stated that he could see that it looked bad, but he stated he had done nothing to hurt ALV and been seen no one she <coughs> else hurt her. Oh, it looks bad, but, 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 you know, this is what they deserve for existing. You, you don't get how out of control these people are. I've got your control. After she disclosed what AOAB1 had done, ALV was asked if anyone else had hurt or hit her, and she said they had not. At one point, just prior to the restraint, the lights go out and nothing is visible. One I too said this was because lights in a hall had been turned out and that there should have been a light in the room. I I asked, is anyone struck ALV during this time when she is also crying? He again stated that she had cried throughout and he didn't notice any cries in particular. I-5 stated if he had seen other hits, he would have reported them. Just before the lights came on, I-5 says bedtime, and he appears to be pushing ALV to the bed when the lights do come on. Jesus. I-6 punishing, pushing ALV. At one point, I-6 says to ALV, congratulations, which he was in response to ALV saying she was going to hit him. The I-6 uses with ALV throughout the incident is not calming, as directed by her program description. I'd fucking hit him. Treat me like that. You treat them as not even human beings, and then you all act shocked when they want to freaking deck your ass. You're starving them, sleep depriving them, you're doing all the things. That will unhinge a person, and then you act shocked when they then act out. They're not shocked, folks. They're using as an excuse to continue their behavior towards us. In case anyone's wondering, they want to make us look crazy to justify what they do to us. It's that simple. When the room became dark, those involved testified that the hall light was switched off. Neither ALAB1 nor I-5 reported noticing that it this as it occurred. I-6 stated that he was the most focused on ALV and her behavior. He stated he was still able to see clearly enough in the room, and although in hindsight he wishes he turned the light on so that the video was available, he did not do this as he did not want to further disturb ALV's roommate who was trying to sleep in the other bed in the room. Oh, I'm sure you really cared about the roommate's well-being. Sure, sure, Karen. I-6 denied seeing or hearing a hit to ALV. ALAB1 denied that she had hit Vi. I'm sorry, ALV. She had previously watched the video footage and agreed that it appeared as if she did, but she stated that the whole time she was trying to redirect ALV from hitting her own face. Oh, bullshit. Bullshit. Folks, the JRC likes to constantly say that they're the saviors here. They're misunderstood. That they're just trying to help. No, they're not. No, they're not. And they are clever. Oh, they can be so clever that you almost believe them. Until you look at the investigation into Linda Cornelison's death. Until you see the video of what happened to Andre McCollins. Until you read the accounts of Jennifer Masamba and the other victims of this place. Until you look in the death into the five others that this place has had a hand in their deaths. Don't let them turn this around. All right. These people have turned victim blaming into a fine art, a projection even more so. If ever I needed to know if there was a 
institution ran by narcissists, this place is it. This place is it. And on that note, folks, we're going to go ahead and close out for this morning. We don't get very many views on this channel. The few that we do get do tend to get removed from time to time. So, folks, please don't forget to hit that like button. Hit subscribe. And, folks, don't forget to hit the comments. I do appreciate your time this morning. And, as always, we here at Spilling Tea hope you have a good one. Bye-bye.